Hi folks. Well, many of you have seen my videos on the MQX quadcopter from Horizon Hobby. So, you know how much I love it. Low life motors and all, it's still worth the money to me. But in looking at the prices of the quads on the market, there are hundreds more than the MQX. And uh, the original design board that I got from Hobby King for this project is the one used on the hexacopter and can be used to make one of those too. Many dealers sell them like Atlanta Hobby, XLE, and Hobby King and others. So while I wait for something that is totally unique that I can afford on my retirement pay, I decided to make my own quadcopter. I spent about a hundred bucks on this project. Well, there were a few disappointing things too. I ordered ESCs that were supposed to be 12 amp, but are 10 amp instead. I ordered a couple of batteries only to find that one shows zero voltage on both cells and thus it's useless. I also ordered a bag of small bullet pins for the motors, but found it came with two short. Also, the speed controllers, they have BECs built into them, but when the controllers began to heat up a little, the BEC would drop the voltage to the receiver and it would start blinking, that's how you know, and then it would glitch during that time. Well, that said, it's very important to have a separate BEC for the receiver. I used the orange receivers as they work perfectly with my Spectrum, and they only cost about six bucks each and about 19 bucks with the satellite receiver. It also seems many other people are doing the same thing with quads and there's no reverse pitch 6.3 props around. I have them on order from three places now and when they show up I'll be able to give a better review of this. In order to test everything first though, I made my own props as you can see. Also, there were no instructions for the controller board. Some references to this on the internet have conflicting prop rotation pictures. And so just to make sure, use the one in the manual from the manufacturer. It's under the files tab at Hobby King. Well, I built a plywood frame with super glue, and ugly as it is, it seems pretty strong. I also found that this is a very touchy machine, and way harder to fly than the MQX. Also, I used my training helicopter test stand and had to do a lot of trimming. In fact, I did so much that my oldest DX6i lost its aileron trim ability. From what I've read, it seems that there are a bunch of other people that are also having this problem. And my problem is not mechanical, as some people say, and broken tabs. But in my next video, I'm going to show you what I had to do to fix mine. So if it ever happens to you, then you'll know how to fix it too. Okay, something that's really important is that you're going to need to lay everything out first. Hook it up, as the wires to the motors just barely fit the frame. It's important to also know how to solder and have a nice soldering station. And also, please be careful when you do the setup. Tie it down. If there's something not right, it can easily flip over with only one motor. So be safe. Here we go. Okay, everything's all set up. First thing you want to do is do your trimming and set up on a test stand or lazy susing. This is my helicopter test stand. You've probably seen my videos how to, how to make it work. This is how I would, would test out everything to make sure it's all working. All right, let's give it a shot. Okay, you know, I've got the wrong size props on here because this is too much pitch and I'm trying to get the right props for it. There are six threes. Uh, so I can't fly this very long without the speed controllers overheating because it's too much load. Let's go ahead and just see if we can pick it up now. This is basically the first time. It is the first time off the stand. So let's see what happens. Here we go. It is sensitive. Now I can't say much for the landing gear. It's pretty solid on these. So what I did was I took one of these noodles and I've cut and they just fit perfectly over top of the landing gear. Like this. And this will be a nice soft way for it to sit and land now.
when the batteries start going down, it goes down. Again, these props have way too much pitch and the gyros need to turn way down, it seems, because they're just uh, too sensitive for me. So when I get the proper props, when they finally show up from somebody, I order them three places, then uh, we'll get this thing properly set up. But right now, I'm just proving to myself that it works. Okay, there we go. I noticed a couple of things. First of all, you're definitely gonna need a BEC because the speed controllers that I bought don't seem to have enough power and occasionally I will lose signal. Second of all, as the power runs down with these big props, uh, it gradually starts to uh, wanna roll. So you kinda got an indication if it's not staying level anymore. Uh, other than that, there you go, about 90 bucks I've put in it to, uh, to build it. Without directions, it was challenging to my mind and that I like. This would make a good school project for science class, I think. Well, that was another fun project from Mr. Herbert's science class. Stay tuned because we're gonna do some more stuff with this.